So what is up everybody, it's Nick here from TechnoDot and today I'm going to talk about Navicons. I'm going to show you way how to create it. Now if you don't know about Navicons, you might want to take a phone from your pocket or whatever it is. Check out one of your apps and I might suggest Gmail. Open your Gmail and check out the off-screen navigation. Now I'm not talking about the off-screen navigation. Check out the three-line hamburger icon which transforms when you slide the off-screen navigation. Now I'm going to talk about how you can create one of those and it's going to be a bit easy to create. Now before I start, uh, I'm going to tell there are multiple ways to create that. And if you don't know uh, how you can do that, you might want to check out this video. But uh, I'm going to show you one of my one of the way how I did it, how I to create uh, my navigations and that's it now before I start I'm gonna use SAS and I expect you to having some uh, knowledge about SAS and not the advanced level but the mediocre uh, even if you have the basic knowledge that's gonna work in this tutorial and you might want to know basic JavaScript uh, basic JavaScript and jQuery so before I start so before I hop right into the text editor, uh, let me demonstrate you what I'm talking about. So I created a pen on CodePen uh, demonstrating Navicons. Uh, so you can find this link uh, to this pen in the description. Just check out the description of this video. Uh, so let's quickly demonstrate and let's get started. So once I click on this hamburger icons, you can see this transforms. Uh, I can say morphs into something else. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to focus on this cross and uh, uh, the logic behind every one of these is same just simple different rotation transitions and translate properties are different so just I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to expect you to create all of the all this using the logic behind this so let's get started right so I'm going to use code pen for this example uh, you can find this pen and the previous pen the links will be in the description so let's check out the markup. Now in the markup, we're gonna uh, simply create a div, give it a class, and we're gonna give it a class of na nav icon and some meaningful classes, and I'm gonna give it a cross. That's what came in my mind right now. So I'm gonna end the div. Now inside this, I'm gonna create an another div and give it a class uh, so I can target them. It's not necessary. You have don't have to use this class uh, but um, still for the precaution I'm gonna use that so I'm gonna give it a class as a span and I'm gonna end the div now that's it that's all for this markup and uh, let's uh, hop right into the CSS and probably as CSS now in the CSS we gonna do is quickly target the nav icon and uh, inside the nav icon we're gonna give it an height and weight And wait to mm, and I'm gonna give that I probably think and I'm gonna give it a, a position uh, relative so now that's it for the nav icon we can target the span inside so I'm gonna use span and inside the span, it's gonna be a height about six pixels. That's what I find it much more prominent. And gonna give it a width about 55 pixels. That's enough. And um, make it position. Uh, if I can spell it correctly, position at or absolute. And uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm centering this, so I'm gonna give uh, use a, a center trick. So I'm gonna use top zero, bottom zero, left uh, zero, and right zero. I'm gonna give it a margin of auto. That's how you position absolute elements, center them. Now that's all. Now I'm gonna need the background so I can see them of black that's fine as you can see we got this just a single band and we need two more bands so we're gonna use some su pseudo elements 
so we're gonna write and colon colon before and if you are a basic user if you don't know what and mean in sats it's just basically gonna uh, in the compile we're just gonna copy this span and re and replace the and with dot span and which means dot span colon colon before so it's usually targeting its parent so now inside then I'm gonna make sure its height and width are the same um, width will be the hundred percent because it's gonna scale with respect to its parent, in which case span is its parent. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna make you the background of black. The um, yeah, probably background black with position, and I can position it if I can spell it correct again. That's it. Uh, position the absolute fine. Now I just forgot one thing. I'm gonna and we need two sort of elements, so I'm gonna do in one line and colon colon after. So there are there are two sort of elements right now. They have some common properties. I'm gonna do in one. So height six pixels with hundred percent background black position absolute, and you can see them because they lie on top of each other. So to do the uh. To, now, so to make them visible, you can need is and after I think. Yep. Yeah, I think I just wrote after. Yeah. In the after, I'm gonna write uh, um, top 27 pixels. Up. Yeah. 20, 20 pixels is enough. And and colon colon before, which can target the before sort of selector. And I'm gonna give it a top of negative 20 pixels. So if I save that, let me see the compiled view what I get. The last and the least thing I forgot to add in here is uh, uh, content, see so, uh, the content property. So which will be em bra empty brackets, or sorry, which will be empty quotes. And without that, you won't be able to see. Like, see, they appeared right now. And that's one of the most important properties right there, which I usually forgot almost. And you can see we created the hamburger icon. And now we want to do is animate it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna um, use active classes to animate them. And if you don't know about active classes, just don't worry about much. I'm gonna tell you later on. So now if you don't know, just one tip if you don't know about SAS much and wanna go for CSS just click in here view compile and you'll be able to see the CSS all the CSS up here compile view so let's uh, quickly jump right it so let's get further right so uh, let's create some active classes so to create active classes I'm gonna select the nav icon which will be and and outside so you can see uh, here's the back close inside there I'm gonna root and which gonna give me the parent element uh, dot active and notice that it's not colon active it's not an active state it's an active class so it's dot active uh, later on we're gonna toggle that using JavaScript and we're gonna write uh, which element we want to animate so we want dot span colon colon after uh, to animate so what we can do right now is we can make top zero so it's gonna get and we're gonna transform it so rotate uh, we're gonna rotate that about 45 degrees that's it uh, that's all we can do right now oops yeah that's it and uh, Notice that I'm using the auto prefixers. If I go into view compile, uh, you'll be seeing that it's all it automatically writes uh, the vendor prefixes. I don't have to write uh, on my own, so I'm not using it. So I'm just gonna simply copy that and paste in here. And after I'm gonna just write before and inside the 45 degrees, just gonna make sure it's negative 45. Now uh, I'm gonna handle this uh, main. Uh, span element and I don't want it to be visible so here I'm go, go is and dot active uh, dot span now I'm gonna inside just gonna write background to be none so it won't be visible now 
Uh, and the animation will happen, but you forgot one thing is adding the transitions. So I'm gonna write transition. Shin, oops, transition. T I O N. I'm gonna transition the all the properties for just point three seconds. That's it, and not no delay. And inside these tags too, I'm gonna add transition. T I O N. <coughs> all the properties for 0.3 seconds no delay i don't want any delay right now so that's it right and uh, i think we finish up the css so let's quickly get in the js and finish up what we started so in the js we i'm gonna call uh, just make sure it partitioned so let's dive right into our script so what we're gonna do in the script is we're gonna create a function inside the function uh, that's it now no. what we're going to do inside this function is you'll create a variable object and get all these classes of nav icons let's do that we're gonna do is document dot the dot query selector all and inside the query selector I'm gonna write nav icon and make sure you write it as a class so dot nav hyphen icon and give it a semicolon and what this is gonna do return is gonna return an array so we're gonna do is oops not if we're gonna create an for loop and we create a variable inside that is i uh, which is equal to the length of the array minus one minus one and we can repeat this for a loop if i till i is greater than equal to zero and we can negative subtract i value and inside that we can create a variable toggle and which is e uh, which will be equal to the ith element of the array so save that and inside uh, we're going to create a function which name will be toggle switch gch and I'm going to pass this variable as argument of that function and then I'll save that so now we don't have the toggle switch function we have to create it so simply function toggle switch and I'm going to pass the argument toggle inside there that's fine and what we're going to do now is we're going to add an event listener so this oops not this sorry toggle dot add event listener t e n e r and inside the event listener we're going to use a click event and create a function inside that now inside that function we're going to do is comparisons and what we're going to compare is classes so simply do that we're going to write this dot class list and what it's going to uh, do is it's going to check all the class and that contains and uh, we're going to check the class active so dot active if is equal to equal to true then uh, what we're going to do here we're going to do is uh, we gonna remove that so this dot class list we are gonna assess we're gonna again assess it so we're gonna remove that class active did that fine and in else what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that class so this dot okay class list dot add active and that's it I think so save that and so let's check it out right oops it's not turning back so what we did wrong in up here okay so yeah I got it so uh, just make sure you remove this dot active you don't have you just have to write active and I think it's gonna work so let's check it out so it's a final test I think it's gonna work so let's check it out right it does that now let's see what if it comes back or not yeah it does see uh, you successfully created the transform icons 
that's it for this tutorial so if you have any query just comment below i'll be answering every query i get and so before i go i just wanted if you like this video please give this video a thumbs up that will be very useful to me and don't forget to subscribe for more so that's it guys thanks for watching it's nick here tech from tech logging out